again, guys, for the sake of uh, this actual process, I'm going to actually first start off with the grayscale and sort of see what we can do in terms of manipulating the ink in the most sort of basic format. Again, and then I will sort of tackle the landscape right after this, as soon as it's slightly drier, okay? Uh, for, again, for the materials, uh, we have my Strathmore 18 by 24 inch drawing paper, obviously my blue painter's tape, my India ink uh, droplet, uh, my two brushes, my Sumi brushes that I have on hand, uh, one large, one small, um, and then I also have a sort of a paper towel here on the bottom. So I just, don't, I wanna keep my sort of edges clean so I don't have any marks bleed over my sheet of paper. I also have two containers. Again, it could be uh, any containers. I'm using these two glass ones that I've had over the years uh, just for the sake of the demo. So I like to keep both of my brushes into the container. And again, those of you who wanna follow along, which I highly recommend uh, in this process, just for the sake of the demo, so any, if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask at this uh, point of time. Um, but then if not, I'll try to have this uploaded by the end of today. So you can at least have that as uh, more context or a review when you're starting your drawing. The most important aspect in this process uh, that I want everybody to sort of grasp is the, the idea of patience. You really have to be patient in this process if possible. And one of the reasons why is that, I mean, you could really rush this assignment, but part of understanding the sort of ink is really allowing the time for it to dry, as well as looking at it of um, one, in terms of one approach, in terms of thinking about ways in which you can kind of understand your mark making. And what I mean by this is that, for example, actually, I didn't talk about this. I do have a small container I'm going to be using, uh, sort of six sort of slots or I can just drop in some ink. Um, and this you can purchase. Um, you don't necessarily have to purchase this, but just for the sake of the demo, I'm going to put this, put my ink on there just to sort of separate the amounts of drops I'm going to add. Um, this is around like a dollar or two, if I'm not mistaken, at Blake. So those of you who want to purchase this, you can. You could also use like a plate or another, again, small container. But for the sake of the demo, I'm actually gonna put it here just so we can see how much drops we use on our droplets of ink, okay? So what I like to do is sort of uh, tightly close it, hold it on the top end and just sort of shake it, get a nice sort of consistency. Because this has been in my drawer for some time, just sort of re uh, reawaken all that sort of wonderful ink so it doesn't get dried up. What, what, what you can do then is just sort of uh, open it and just take your tear drop and add about, let's say, two, three drops. I'm also going to add one drop here. And then I'm, I'm actually going to add, for the sake of the demo, I'll leave it for just about one drop here and three drops there. Take my small brush, again, a lot of excess water on there. I'm going to sort of my paper towel here sort of dry that out. So I want a sort of damp brush. You could also use your fingers to sort of make a point uh, in order just to sort of understand the ways in which how much, uh, how wet your brush is. You can take a little bit of the water and then I can start diluting the ink. And those of you want to follow along, feel free to do this at your at your own desk or at your own uh, stations. I'm gonna water it a little bit more. And I'm gonna start just gradually. These areas are sort of empty, but you can obviously they're sort of dry. I'm gonna add a little bit of water here. I'm being slightly aggressive because I want all that extra ink off. Add a little bit more water. And I'm actually gonna use that as my first sort of uh, value, okay? Again, I want to just to add a little bit of water gradually. I'm gonna just blot my brush and I'm gonna make a value, I'll start from Actually, I'll start from this uh, upper side. I'm actually in my container. 
I'll start right over here. I'm gonna make a small swatch. And again, it's a little wet. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's a very, very light gray. What I'm now gonna do, add a little bit of my brush and add it to this container. And a little bit more. I'm gonna sort of blot my brush. You can see there's a difference on my actual paper towel as well and make another swatch. Notice I'm using my side of my brush. I wanna, you know, gradually just work my way just make a nice even square. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And then I'll move my camera because you can start to see this is drying up. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm actually gonna just use half of that in here, half of this, of how many uh, of that one drop, mix it into this container. And if we have questions, let me know. To blot that, there you go. I like to go in multiple directions just to get familiar with the brush. And you are gonna get those streaks and that's okay. And then now I'm gonna take what's in here and blot that a little bit. And I always get this question a lot in terms of bleeds is that if you don't want this color and this color to sort of bleed within that sort of space or blend, I need to wait for that process to slightly dry. And then now in this container, I'm gonna uh, now go back here to the three drops, lightly just pick up a little bit of the ink and blend it here. Just very lightly, because I don't wanna grab too much. I'm gonna blot it. Okay, and then do the same thing, add a little bit more. A little bit more water. That's actually really dark. A little bit more. Back to my container. There you go, that's better. Okay. Now I'll just take my, I'm gonna add my little container here on the sort of right hand side. Clean that up. I'm gonna do the same thing now. I'm just gonna grab some of this, a little bit more of the ink. Actually too watery. And then I'm gonna add just the black ink of the three drops, dilute that slightly. There's some of them moving in multiple directions. And I have a slight value within that sort of space. And the reason why we do this is because, again, to understand how much water is necessary within this process. If I, for example, took my big brush, I have it in this container here on the left hand side. And if I just took some ink, I'm going to add a little bit more of ink onto this sort of circle of my palette. I just want it one drop. If I made sort of value 
Remove this container here. You can see how dark that is, right? But then let's say, for example, what would happen? I'm going to put my brush down slightly on this container. I have this container that's slightly dirty. I'm going to clean up that brush. And while it's still wet, I'm going to take some of that, of the ink there, just dip it in some water. And I could, in theory, almost make a value with one single line. Right? Because it's now a la prima, wet on wet. I can take some of my ink and sort of gradually blend that in there. And I want to sort of see what happens if I add, uh, add too much water or not enough. Right now, I can start to see some bubbles. But let's let's see for for the sake of the demo, right? What happens if you would add a drop onto that wet surface? Oh, it's not dropping. Hold on, there's not enough ink on there. It starts to what? Bleed. And you can see it's starting to move rapidly. I could, in theory, just add water and sort of make some of these areas blend. But then I can also take a lot of water and make it almost disappear within that space. And then what I also can do is take my paper towel while it's still wet on my sheet of paper. And this is where the erasing happens, which is really exciting, or texture. So I can actually add a variations of some texture onto my landscape. That remnants is still there. It almost becomes like a ghost image. But this almost now looks like a horizon that sort of recedes into that space. What you now can do is also add, I'm um, just for the sake of the demo, a landscape. I'm doing this really quickly. But then now if I take my wet paper towel, I can remove some of that while it's still wet. And th what's crucial about this assignment is patience between the amount of time that's left on your sheet of paper in terms of how much water you have. And if you take your best friend, which is your paper towel, this is your eraser, right? If you made an accident, let's say if you dropped some ink onto uh, a wet surface of the paper, and if you want to erase, quickly just take your paper towel, just remove it. Remember, obviously, there's some sort of ghost-like images that are still remaining on the surface of the paper, but it's better than nothing. But that also could be used towards your advantage. But if we did, in theory, add a series of darker marks, you can just take your droplet of ink, get my another paper towel out. Again, your paper towel is your best friend in this process. I just like to have it nearby so if there's any mistakes, I can just go quickly go pick that up. Damp my smaller brush. And I can also bleed some of those areas together while it's still wet. Some water. And this actually covers a lot of ground, depending on how much I want to add within that sort of space. What questions do we have so far of just the value?
Now it's gonna be wet on wet. Add more darks. And I'm noticing, notice how that area bleeds into that space. You'll start to see that sort of build up between layers, okay? Questions about value. Okay, now let's get into the landscape. Load this paper towel. And I'm gonna let that dry on the side. So while that's drying, I'm now gonna go back. Okay. Let me adjust this camera. We all can see this, correct? Am I losing everybody? Uh, I can see it. I, I don't see the bottom line of the tape though. Is that better, Mulch? Can we see it now? Uh, I can see the top and the side sides of the tape. I just can't see the bottom of the tape. The bar is in the way. The what's in the way? The paper towel? No, like the bottom bar of the Zoom meeting, it cuts off part of the picture. Oh, that's interesting. Hold on. So like what you're seeing is probably, yeah, now I can see it all. I got you, I got you. So I can slightly get up there. So oh, I can move the camera so you can see a little bit better. Is that better? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Awesome. All righty. Let me pull up my reference. Actually, this camera is being a... Right. Okay. I'm going to just leave it so I don't. So let me pull up that reference. Give me one second. And again, I have that available in modules. Uh, but just for the sake of the demo, we're going to be using this reference. And where is it? Oh, I see. It's the Haurimani um, perspective. So the image that I have that I'm gonna be using for the demo is, I can show you guys just for the sake of the demo, it's going to be this guy. This is what we're gonna be using, okay? Um, and then let me stop screen sharing. And then now, I notice that my orientation is slightly different, so I need to change that. Or actually, since, because I actually have this taped on my table, I'm gonna work with this sort of perspective uh, and then we can go from there. What I also can do just for the sake of the demo is sort of crop this side. So that's what, that's what I'm actually gonna do. And I actually taped the entire drawing onto my table. And again, one of the reasons why I do this is because I don't want my water or my ink to bend or buckle within that sort of space. We're gonna make a smaller sort of landscape here. So I'm gonna zoom in slightly. And we can go from there, okay. Uh, oh, I can also then show you just my materials on those sides as well. The container one, container two, the ink, and then I have my palette here. Again, you do not have to purchase a palette. You could use anything. I like to use older plates um, and things like that. There's actually I have my dirtier paper towel when I use before anything else and then my table, just in case if I do need it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put this on my right hand side. And then now let me go back to my reference. I'm now going to work again, guys. I can't see you or um, see your hand raised. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Going to see where in which I'm going to use my big brush just to sort of cover my entire ground. And I'm actually going to clean all this off so we can start from scratch. Little water goes a long way. Okay. 
And then what I'm going to do is add two drops. You know what? We'll just add one. It's more than enough. On um, actually, we'll add two just for, for the sake of the demo. I'm part of this process, and I want to work really from my light to my dark, meaning the lighter areas of my drawing I need to cover, and the whitest area of my drawing I'm going to leave blank, which is my white sheet of paper. It's something I need to. Uh, really remember or factor in within this process. I'm going to move my brush on this side. I'm going to use sort of, now notice this obviously is contaminated with a little bit of ink, which is okay. Not too much. I'm going to just sort of take my larger brush and sort of just add in some of the water. And I'm going to blend some of those areas. And I want to gradually add uh, a light wash throughout my entire drawing. Again, I'm just put this down for a second. This is my what? My picture plane. Okay. I need to sort of cover my picture plane in this sort of understanding of, okay, where my composition will be. Okay. So, how do I do this? I'm going to add a little bit of ink on there. What I'm gonna do, again, so I can't see this on my end, so if you guys have any questions, just feel free to ask. Take my large brush, I could use my side or my tip. I like to use both and, and the ways in terms of sort of sketching out my composition. I notice in terms of I sort of frame my composition, uh, there's sort of that the bedrock of that river or that sort of uh, stream. I'm gonna just sort of slightly start from, I would say where that horizon line would be and sort of sketch out very lightly the stream of where it's sort of receding. That's also where that sort of base of that horizon would be. This is the base of that hill. Again, this is really light. Okay. But then now what I wanna do sort of now see where in which probably halfway mark would be here where that smaller hill would be. Here's the other ones that recede into that distance. I'm not worrying about detail. I'm not worrying about value yet. I'm just sort of mapping out my composition. Really taking my time. Part of this patience is a virtue that we have to understand, again, the ways in which we can kind of tackle our own drawings. Gradually, you're again, moving the material forward. You're moving on the surface of your paper. Okay. And then I have my sort of other side of my hill, which will be probably right around there. But then now I need to also see the foreground. And then that sort of slight road. And there's also the side of that hill. And then variations of the sky, of the clouds, I should say, excuse me. That sort of almost sort of give a nice sort of oval composition. And that's where I stop. Okay. I have now sort of figured out that perspective within understanding the kind of the simplicity of my landscape. What's important? And this took about what, a minute, maybe two minutes? But then now what I can do is wait for this while this is drying. I can go back to my palette. And let's say, for example, I'm not going to take my small brush. This is where I can refine some of those smaller areas. Okay. And I want to gradually add more ink on one, pal uh, one circle. Add three drops here. That's more than enough. A little bit goes a long way. Remember to keep that in mind. Take my water, my contaminated water, not my clean water, because my clean water is on, on my top. 
I'll blend in some of those areas. I'm gonna check the viscosity, how thick or thin it is. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. And I, again, the paper towel, I like to keep right by me on my surface. So if I, it doesn't bleed over, or if I make any mistakes, I can quickly go back. But I also like to add a little bit of my ink that I blend in terms of one pa uh, swatch, which is right about here. I'm gonna blot it on my paper towel and that's sort of a sort of preview before I get into my uh, sheet of paper, okay? So keep that in mind. A little bit more water. And I sort of want a medium light, not a medium dark, a medium light. I sort of jumped over to this side of the palette. Oh, that's good. That's a good medium light. A little bit more water. And you want to work gradually in this process, everyone. You really want to take your time, okay? And now I'm looking at the drawing to see where my medium tones are. So I can start to see closely. And again, I would, what I like to do ideally is kind of hold my brush in a sort of 90 degree angle and gradually sort of move my sort of brush around the surface of my paper. You don't necessarily have to, you could hold it like a standard brush or a standard pencil, but you really wanna hold the ends here to kind of get this sort of much more fluid gestural mark making um, ways in which you can kind of express your mark. So for example, if I hold it like this, it's less freedom within looking at how we can manipulate the, uh, the ink. If I hold it to my tip, excuse me, to my end, it's much more fluid that way, kind of relinquishing a little bit of that control. Okay. Now I'm gonna add, let's see, let's add, let's actually add more of the bridge. And the bridge will probably be, and I have to be mindful, I can't have too much water, right about there. Okay, and then I'm gonna lower this. Right about there. It's the top of the bridge. That's where the bridge would be. I'm gonna go over it because I'm just leaving a wash. Okay, add that sort of slight road. Where that surface is. These are sides of the mountain. They make this sort of effects of the hills and the mountains on the landscape. I'm gonna fill in some of that space in the back. Slight variation. Okay. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit more here. I'm gradually adding values. You really want to take your mind, uh, time on this process. Notice this mark is very thick, which is okay, because I want to sort of work around it. Let me add one other person in here, sorry. And this is where I can add texture. Let's say, for example, some of the foliage here of where the trees are. I'm gonna to start to blot, just make some series of marks, sort of indicate, oh, there's a bunch of trees. I'm not gonna just sort of slightly dab into those surfaces. I'm gonna go over it again, to kind of make, build upon that texture. I'm just let it, literally letting gravity do its job, not blending too much in there. Add a little bit more. Add more to this side. Just slightly dabbing and I'm holding it at an almost 45 degree angle using the tip of the brush onto my surface. Really take your time. I don't wanna to jump to my blacks, not yet. You're gradually working with your lights and kind of getting into the formula. Okay. Add a little bit more value here. What questions do we have so far?
No questions. Okay. Add more of those values on the sort of uh, left side of the mountains here. And again, what recedes into that space is obviously lighter. But I'm also going to add a little bit of water to start with that. And once it dries, it dries up slightly lighter. So I need to also keep that in mind. That road down there where the bridge is crossing. There's a small little village down there. There's almost a pond, a stream. Also recedes into that surface there. Okay. Can I can't see what I'm seeing on your guys' side. So if you have any questions, just feel free to speak. There's a really interesting perspective here or that sort of that farm streamline starts to begin and there's a little hutch, whatever that is, a small little home right over here. Really taking my time. You won't be in that sort of Zen process, really letting the ink do its job, okay? So now I have a sort of rough, let me see how this looks on what your guys' end. Okay, so now I have a sort of rough composition so far. Did any of this make um, anybody confused? No, okay. I'm assuming your guys' silence means you guys are getting this, which is fantastic. But then now, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna take some ink and I'm gonna sort of fast forward and jump ahead. I'm gonna make some darks. Added three drops onto my palette. Let me pull up my reference. I'm gonna start adding some uh, medium darks. Not blacks, but medium darks. There you go, that's good. So what I want to do is hold, use my small brush and to gradually start filling in some of these. And that's a sort of area in terms of where I can start to see that smaller road right down there. Again, this is going to be slightly darker in that area, which is perfect. Notice the direction I'm sort of kind of creating, or ideally like to create. Then I noticed there's almost a value on the base of the stream. I'm going to leave that there so it can dry. So when I go back, I'm going to add another layer on top of it. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit more on this side.
Okay. I'm going to flop over here. Putting more of those textures of the foliage down there. And I want that sort of gray to kind of be lightly sort of more drier at that stage before I tackle another layer on top of that. Because again, it's going to dry a lot lighter. And again, what you're doing here is just building this sort of rich texture that we're going to add on these mountains. Just gradually adding another layer on top of that mountain up towards the left in the background. And another one here, because you can see it gets a little bit darker and it's almost bleeds into a lighter surface, which is nice. A little bit of that water, kind of make that sort of almost gradually get thinner and lighter. There's that one in the background there. And that right there indicates how far that is in terms of the sort of perspectival space. I'm also going to add a little bit more darker variation on this mountain, knowing that it's going to become darker and lighter once it's fully dry. Now I'm gonna, I'm noticing my paper starting to buckle onto that surface. What I wanna do at these stages is wait for it to dry. And I'm gonna come tackle this a little bit later. What questions do we have? Okay. All righty. I'm gonna wait for this area to dry a little bit. I'm gonna come back to my drawing in about a few minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let me do, let me